So if you're looking at this for the first time, you may have no idea what this means other than that you could see the state of Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, you might be able to identify that, but you would have no idea what these little barbs and flags are all about and the circles and the different symbols and so forth. You'd see some numbers. You might think that maybe that has something to do with temperature, but you would have very little idea of what's going on here. By the way, this map is from one of the more uh, infamous outbreaks of tornadoes in Southern Plains history, May 24th, 2011. Um, look it up. It was a very impressive day. There were uh, three violent tornadoes officially in central Oklahoma that day. Um, two F4s and one F5. Arguably, they were all F5s. Just an incredible uh, event and one that I actually chased. I got to see uh, two of those and it was just a very, very incredible day. But you wouldn't know how to read this map if you didn't know how to read a surface chart. So that's next. The station plots uh, are those little, um, you know, those little locations on the map where you see the, the circles and the wind barbs. So we'll do, uh, we'll talk about that in detail here and explain what, what each of those pieces actually means. So to begin, the wind. So this is um, basically a long flag with some barbs at the end of it. It's pointing, if you were thinking of this in almost in a polar coordinate sense, it's pointing from the northwest to the southeast. So it is actually a northwesterly wind is what you would say. Um, so this is also, uh, by the way, the, the barbs correspond to the, the magnitude of the wind. So you see this long barb that corresponds to 10 knots and that short barb corresponds to five, put 10 and five together, and that's a 15 knot wind from the northwest. Now moving counterclockwise, you see this 57, that's just the, the air temperature at the surface. Um, so that's one of the more easy ones to identify. Then you have this weather symbol here below the temperature. That's little three dots. I believe that represents, I think, moderate, maybe even heavy rain. Honestly, I've forgotten most of these uh, weather uh, symbols here, but if you're curious about that, look it up on Google. You can find all the information there. Typically, it's not terribly important to know that um, unless you're trying to find out about snow or something like that, because you can see most of this stuff from radar anyhow. But underneath that, you have the dew point temperature. In this case, it's 56. Um, so... This is interesting because it looks like the temperature here is 57, the dew point is 56. Um, in meteorological jargon, you might say that's 57 over 56. 57 uh, meaning the temperature, 56 meaning the dew point. So anytime you hear something over something else, it's temperature over dew point. Um, sky cover, in this case, it's clear because the circle is white. If that were filled in with black, that would be you know overcast um, and it, these are kind of filled to the extent that the sky is covered with clouds. So if you have uh, one quarter of this covered in black, that would be partly cloudy. And then you have the pressure trend in millibars. In this case, the pressure was dropping at six millibars over a period of time. And you have the sea level pressure here. We won't go too much into detail on the uh, pressure, but you get the idea. Now, in terms of the wind barbs, uh, this is just uh, to show you how to represent the wind speed in particular the wind direction except in the case of the calm is actually from the northeast so you see this uh, flag is pointing to the southwest um so calm here you've got a circle with a little dot in the middle and then the little kind of broken uh looking <laughs> uh wind barb here that's five knots and then you've got uh 10 knots and 15 knots and so on so basically the number of barbs uh, corresponds to um the wind speed in knots so uh, 10 knots times whatever number of barbs you have so uh, that is true all the way up into 50 knots and there you get a flag um and then the flag you add some more barbs and so on so you get kind of the pattern here um the barbs equal 10 knots or half a barb equals five knots and the flags equal 50. and by the way these winds around here uh so you know above say 100 knots, you typically don't see those very often except at the highest levels of the troposphere, which is where all of our weather happens, by the way. So hand analysis. So the same weather chart or 
I guess the surface map here from May 24th, 2011. Let's throw in some hand analysis. So this is what is known as the 70 degree isodrosotherm, isodrosotherm, which is just a fancy way of saying a line of constant dew point. So what that means is you'll notice that here in central Oklahoma, let me just point out this station right here has a 72 degree dew point. You see that kind of greenish color there. And so basically to the right of this line that I drew in, you have dew points in the lower 70s. And to the left of that, you have dew points that are less than 70. So you draw the line right in between. And the reason you do this is it actually helps to visualize or illuminate uh, what's actually going on with the weather there. So uh, this is known as isoplething. So basically taking any quantity, temperature, dew point, whatever, wind, speed, and getting a good sense of it by plotting it. And here in this case, I've plotted the dry line. Um, this is just showing roughly uh, the difference between the, the boundary between the warm, moist air over Oklahoma and Kansas and the dry desert southwest air just west of the dry line. So you can see here in central Oklahoma, the winds are kind of from, from the southeast and southeasterly uh, winds. And this is a pretty common pattern uh, for severe weather. And then out to the west of the dry line, the um, winds are coming from the southwest. Obviously, the dew point drops a little bit. Actually, if you look out in West Texas, dew point of 17, very low. So uh, that firms it up. And the dry line, by the way, is a very strong focus for the development of supercells during the spring. And then the warm front, this is somewhat subjectively annotated here, but basically it shows the difference between relatively warm temperatures to the south and relatively cool temperatures to the north. You'll see that it's a little bit fuzzy where that is, um, just generally shows about 80 degrees as the location of the warm front. Um, but that is, again, fairly up to personal interpretation. But warm fronts uh, are moving in the direction of the cool air. So in this case, cool air is off to the north. So the warm front is moving off to the north. And then the opposite is true for cold fronts. Those are bringing cooler air uh, into the warmer air. So in the, this case, the warmer air is behind the dry line. So the cold front is uh, coming from north to south. And then the center of the low pressure is actually right there where those intersect intersecting lines occur. This is known as the triple point. That's where the cold front, the warm front, and the dry line come together. So three things, the triple point, and that's where a lot of storm chasers will actually focus on their targets right here, just to the northeast of the um, sort of bowing out uh, dry line, the bulging dry line. Um, in this case, of course, if you did, <laughs> if you did actually uh, target that area, you would have been a little disappointed. Um, it turned out most of the severe weather, as I mentioned before, the big nasty uh, storms happened in central Oklahoma, but you can see there's a good reason for that. The moisture here, the 72 degree dew points, you know, a lot higher than what you see here in southern Kansas, 61. So uh, you could have inferred that central Oklahoma is a better place to be.